Okay, welcome to lecture five. Today we will talk about uh, the weight management, how to calculate the BMR, uh, basal metabolic rate, with the total calories that you want to spend during the day according to your physical activity or and other conditions. So let's start with uh, uh, some definitions and overview of the weight management. In the past, in the past, every six from every six, probably that was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and the problem is getting even bigger. Uh, six, uh, 10, 15 years ago, uh, people, uh, obese people, were in the, in the range of from every six people, one will could be obese or was obese. Nowadays, is for every three, we have one person who is obese. If you can tell the the balance, the diet is been changing with the time. In uh, before the fifties, there was uh, the, before the fifties is already sixty years ago, sixties. Uh, the diet was totally different from now. Uh, that is the time where fast food start to appear, and with the time uh, in the seventies, the changes was basically increasing the number of heart attacks, strokes, uh, hypertension. In the 2000s, uh, the trend was was the same, but with a higher number of people affected with obesity, especially with the, the metabolic syndrome. So we have uh, three over two are overweight, three over two. You remember that the, the BMI is calculated between the weight and the height, the height in meters square. And we are going to do some, some uh, calculations. Uh, two, three to two, uh, three, th from three patient, persons, two are overweight. And from every three people, one is obese. So uh, obesity is getting taking, taking more area with people, especially in uh, at, uh, actually in any age at any age there is obese uh, uh, teenagers and obese adults so if you know that we decrease the metabolic rate with the time uh, about one percent every year so that means that you have the ten you tend to increase weight with the, with the age how much weight you gain with age so it's approximately half pound per year, half pound per year. Okay, so um, half pound, half pound a year is what your weight basically is going to increase a, a, in a year. Okay, so one pound of fat is the kilocalories is equivalent of three thousand five hundred kilocalories. It's just a number, uh, just to give you an idea. So one pound, one pound, 456 grams of fat are going to have 3,500 kilocalories. So lack of exercises is the major contributing factor to increase the obesity rate in the United States. Yeah, as you get older, as you get advancing age, uh, your physical activity start to go in general, not all the time, but in general will go down. So you have less, act, uh, less activity. And uh, that, in addition with the summation of the change of metabolism, can lead into an increase of weight. Okay? Okay, so here we have the BMI, and the BMI is, uh, we have this, these numbers. Underweight is less than 18.5. Normal, below 25. Below 20, less than 25. Overweight. 25 to 29, and obese more than 30. So just remember normal below 25 and obese 30 or more. In between will be the overweight, okay? All right, so let me see if I have here this uh, BMI. Okay, so if you say here, look at this, is BMI is kilograms over meter square. So how we are going to do that? Uh, okay, so let's, you want to find your BMI? Let's find the BMI.
Okay, BMI. What is BMI? Body mass index. Body mass index. Excellent. All right, so BMI will be what? Is the weight in kilograms times what? Oh, divided by height in meter square. Height square. Okay? All right, so let's see. For example, let's let's see the the weight of a patient is going to be hundred. Uh, let's let's calculate my BMI. I am right now hundred seventy. How much? Seventy four pounds. How much is that in kilograms? How much? Hold on. Yeah. 79 kilograms. 79 kilos. So we have this already, the weight. Now let's to go to the height. The height is going to be, I'm 5'9", but not really nice, I'm 5'8". So that means 5 feet, that is equivalent of, in inches, I need to change it in inches, correct? Inches or not? So we have one feet here down and one inch here. So we have 12 inches, it's one feet. Feet and feet goodbye, and we have 60, 60 inches. 68? Plus 68. eight, 68 inches. Now 68 inches, I need to change it to centimeters. So one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters correct inches and inches goodbye how much is that 2.54 172.72 one point seventy two point seventy two right no what sorry what you said 1.72 right 172 no 172 point seventy two okay 70 70 or 72 72 okay perfect Okay, 172, 72. So that is in centimeters, right? Mm -hmm. But I need to change that in meters. So 172.72 centimeters times we have uh, 100 centimeters, and here we have one meter. Centimeters and centimeters, goodbye, and you have 1.72. Let's make yeah. it 172. Okay? So now, the formula for BMI will be this one that we was are going to make it clean here. Oh my, I, I, I erased something that I don't want. Okay. All right, so let's make it clear here. BMI is weight over height square. So that means to be uh, in, uh, the weight is, uh, how much was, was my weight? 79, right? 79 kilograms. 79 kilograms over the height. The height is 1.72 meters, correct? Squared. But square. Excellent. So now you divide 79 by 1.72 two times. So you're going to divide 79 divided 79 divided by 1.72 and divided again 26.7. So, where, where I am, uh, Chris? You are obese, Dr. G. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's over 20, 25, and 25 below is uh, normal, right? Yeah, so below 25 is is normal. Normal, uh-huh. So, right now, I, I am abnormal. Okay? So, 30 or more... <laughs> Not abnormal, obese. It's obese. <laughs> More than 30 is obese. And between 29, 25 to 29 is overweight. Oh, overweight. <laughs> See? Okay. All right. So can you, can everybody uh, check your BMI, please? Can you do it now? I, I'm going to give you five minutes. And, and use that formula that you said? The what? 
the formula that you said? Yeah, the formula, yes. The formula will be weight over height squared. If somebody, you need to do that because there is, do, let's do it now. If you have some doubts, we can do it here. I can tell you how to do it, but try to do it now. If you cannot do it, we need to find out how, how to show you because that is coming for the final exam. So you better know it now. Okay. So, okay. So can you, so change everybody, everybody can need to change your, your, uh, pounds into kilograms. Kilograms. You don't need to tell me your your kilograms. Huh? Don't tell me your weight. Do I need to lose weight, Chris? No, no, you don't, Doctor G. Yeah, I need to lose weight. I go into how many pounds I need to lose. See, there is a lot of questions there, right? So, what is my ideal ideal weight? So, and then I calculate what should what should be my BMI in twenty five, right? So, let me calculate that myself. So, in order to be normal, have the BMI should be 25. 24.99, right? So I have my formula is 25. I have my height was uh, 172, right? No, 1.72 square. And here my weight. So that is the weight I need to do. So 25 times 1.72 square, that is the weight I will, I should have to be. So let's find out 172 two times 172 times 25 that is 73 kilos 73 kilos so in pounds will be by 2.2 is going to be 162 oh my god 163 yes a little bit 163 but my weight is 174 so i need to lose nine pounds See? yeah that's why I, I don't like this bmi i'm i'm, I'm you don't like the bmi yeah but no, don't tell me you don't have to tell me but i i can suspect no no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> very good very good no Lani, you have your your bmi don't tell me you don't need to tell me yeah, yes i think no? Hillary will be the only one that's safe Melissa, okay. So I want to know if you find your 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 BMI. So yes, yes or no? Don't tell me the BMI. Yes. Karen, you find it? Yes. Excellent. Melissa, you find it? Yeah. Yes. Anna, you 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 found it? Yeah. Excellent. I Ivona? Yeah, I did. Okay, Mia. Yes. Excellent. Uh, Chris, already? Uh, Noelani, you find it? Yes? Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, Hillary? Yes. That was very brief. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, Hillary. All right. So that is your, your, you can calculate as I did here. How was my, what is the weight I need to go up or down? Right? So if you want to go up or down, depends on depends on that. So you can see the application. Easy, right? Is that difficult or no? Not really. We just have to do whole our conver um conversation. No. Conversion. Yeah. Conversions, right? Yeah. Now tell me one thing. And that is basically the class today. So a lot of application. So if you want to lose weight, that is the most common, right? So you already know that the United States, we uh, we have, um, I, I'm in that group of three out of two, right? I'm, I'm not obese, that is my sure. And that is not, I, I'm not obese. That's good. So uh, what is, uh, what you need to know is this. So in order to lose weight, how, how many 
hours. In, lose, in order to lose weight, you need to do two things, nutrition and exercises, correct? So you right. need to make a plan of exercises and diet, okay? So if for you, you are going to learn how to do your, your diet now and how much exercises you need to do in, lose, in order to lose weight. Number one is diet and exercises together. So now, in order to know how much you need to eat, you need to calculate the BMR with the, with the activity factor that we are going to learn now today. The previous classes, you learn how to how much kilocalories you need to survive your body, to, to be alive. But now we need to add according to the activity that you do every day. For that, that is going to give you the amount of kilocalories, the amount of kilo, right? Uh, please listen to this very well. So you're going to have the amount of kilocalories you require in a day. Now you want to lose weight, you need to decrease 500 kilocalories to the total. You need to decrease 500 kilo, kilocalories to the total. So, and then you can cook, you can calculate, you have the total amount of kilocalories and you're going to calculate how many grams of protein, how many grams of fat, how many uh, grams of carbohydrates. Nice, right? Plus, how much exercises you're going to do to have a sustainable loss of weight. You don't want to lose two pounds in one day. You need to lose between, I think it's one to two pounds per week. No, no more than that. If you lose two, three pounds a day, that is means you are losing water and, and carbohydrates. That's it. So, all right, so let's start. So you already know what is your BMI. And so that is where we are. Underweight, this, normal. 18.5 to 24, 25 to 29 is overweight and more than 30 is obese. So I've got, I, I'm not 28, 29, so it's going to be more easier to get to normal, but nine pounds is doable, completely doable. I lost already, you know what? I was, my weight was 190, 190. So basically I, I lost already like, uh, 16 pounds and that's okay that's good because that was not my normal weight my normal weight was 165 in the past so all right so let's keep going so uh bmi definitions body composition muscle mass body uh, water and bone so basically the, your weight is is composed by all the fluid remember your fluid is about 60 percent of your of your body weight Okay, so this is to lose two pounds in two weeks, a decrease of 500 kilocalories per day will be need to occur. So that is the recommendation. The recommendation if you want to lose weight, sustainable loss weight, sustainable loss weight loss, sustainable weight loss. So that means that you're not killing yourself to not eat two, three days in a row when your metabolism is going down. Uh, at the end of the, so your body, when you're not eating or you this having this fasting two three days, your metabolism is going down. So that means that you requiring those energy are going to be lower. But uh, at the end of three days, you are hungry like a lion and you want to eat everything, right? Or I I fast three days, but you you eat a lot more than that. together in the fourth day you eat more than the three days before, and that is. Uh, and, they, and the body is going to be in low metabolism, so they don't need that much, amount of energy. So the excess that you eat is going to be deposited into fat. So it's not good to do these fastings, okay? So to have a sustainable loss of weight, you need to decrease, question for the exam, 500 kilocalories from the total amount of kilocalories you, that you require in a day. You okay with that? All right, so two hormones that are participating in this situation will be the leptin and the ghrelin. We talk about the leptin and ghrelin, right? Hello, communication, please. Yes. Okay, so we, we talk about that. So 
can do you want me to talk about that again or no please let's make it a little bit more dynamic yes dr g can you review please okay so leptin leptin and ghrelin so those hormones are going to regulate regulate if you are is telling the body if you are hungry or not if you are satisfied or you are hungry uh, leptin let's start with the ghrelin Ghrelin is produced by the gastric mucosa, so the stomach. So, and you can tell how to remember that, right? I can tell you. Ghrelin, and that produces hungry. Okay, so how to remember ghrelin produces hungry? G, gastric, is produced by the stomach. H is the only who have, H is make you hungry. And when is that? When the stomach is empty, an empty stomach. Your stomach is empty. That is when you start, the stomach start to uh, secrete the ghrelin, that is for the, stimulate the appetite. We okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so please uh, don't, don't let me alone, please, okay? So, because I, I feel like that. Uh, talking to myself. Leptin. Leptin is produced by the lipid cells, and very easy to remember, right? Lipid cells. And that is going to produce the society, satiety, that's how you pronounce that. So you feel satisfied, satisfied. Okay, so in conclusion, so you, in the next two hours, you're not going to eat, your stomach is empty, the stomach is going to start releasing ghrelin. Ghrelin go to the central nervous system, to the brain stem, and that is going to communicate to the body that you are hungry, you're hungry. Then you start to eat. And when you eat, you're going to this, when you eat, you, uh, you put food in the stomach. The stomach is going to be distended, correct? And that is going to decrease the production of ghrelin. Make sense or not? Makes sense. Okay. So that then what happened, the absorption is going to occur. The absorption about probably half an hour, 20 minutes start to increase. They are going to be absorption. And this absorption will be fatty acids. And these fatty acids will go into the into the lipid cells. Lipid cells, lipid cells. So the lipid cells is the same to say fat cells. Leptin, lipid cells, fat cells. Okay? And, uh, and that is the moment that the, the lipid cells or fat cells produce the leptin. And the leptin go to the central nervous system and it's telling you, you know what? I'm, I'm full. I don't want to eat anymore. Okay? So that is about leptin and ghrelin. Okay? Here on the left side, we need to talk about the amount of fat that a person need to require for normal functioning. Yes, we need a certain amount of fat in order to work certain uh, endocrine system, especially the secretion of estrogens. So menstruation, the menstruation begins when the female body fat reaches 20% of the body weight. So you have a, what is the average, what is the average uh, menarche in the United States? 12.7 years old, 12.7 years old. At 12, almost 13 years old, between 12 to 13 is the menstrual period, the first one. And the menstrual period, uh, we know that the, the little girl now that is going to be puber, adolescent, they are going to need to accumulate about 20% of the whole body weight should be fat. Before that, it's not going to happen in menstrual period. So that means that the fat have some uh, role of in order to regulate the, the, the menstrual hormonal changes, right? Okay? All right. The minimal, uh, minimal percentage of weight of of body weight of fat should be about 3% in male and 8% in female. Okay, so we need some fat. Uh, the fat have other functions. Huh? Fat, for example, uh, tell me one thing. Do you notice that women who are obese, very obese, they have problems with fertility to get pregnant? Yeah. 
Do you know that, right? It could be stain levantal or, or, or polycystic or ovarian cystic disease, whatever. But why is that? These females, they have excess of fat. This fat produce estrogens. Yes, fat can produce estrogens in a small amount, but they can produce estrogens, estrogens, estrogens. So they have estrogens elevated every day. And you know, we was talking anatomy physiology that the menstrual cycle, what is the highest, what is, which day is the, we found the estrogen, estrogens the highest in the menstrual cycle? The 12th day. Excellent, 12th day, 12th day. And after 12th day, what happened? It started to go down, the estrogens. And that is going to allow the ovulation. We get that? Yes. Okay, perfect. So now, uh, if that is the case, if you have, for example, OCP, oral contraceptive pill, you have all the time you're taking estrogen. So all the time your estrogens are going to be very high. There is no chance that estrogens go down because you're taking OCP by mouth. And that prevents the ovulation. Because as I said, ovulation is going to happen only when the previously estrogens are start to going down. This estrogen going down allowed ovulation allowed ovulation but if your estrogens are very high all the time never estrogen go down so they will never allow the ovulation that is ocp in case of obesity patients produce certain amount of estrogen from the fat tissue and that is similar as you were taking ocps because your estrogens are going to be always high make sense yes makes sense yeah. Okay, so we need minimum amount of fat in 3% in male and 8% in female. Okay, so there is different type of diet. So this is the consolidation of what we was talking in the past. Please, nothing is free. Well, few things, few things. I'm not going to talk about that, but the majority, 99% of things in the world are for some reason. Especially when you're talking about TV advertisement, they don't care about, they care about how much money they can get. So basically that is what they want to sell it, uh, marketing and all that. It's very, 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 if you see here, do you notice this uh, advertisement to lose weight are going to be mostly at night at like two or three o'clock in the morning? Do you notice that? So see, if you sometimes you get I mean, awake until that time, once in a while. I mean, I did it in the past. So I don't have anything to do. I just was boring. And I was watching TV at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, especially when I was a kid. And you see all these advertisements coming to lose weight, to do exercises, lose weight, 10 days, losing weight. Promise you that you're going, the fat they dissolve in front of you. So all these advertisements, right? And why is that happen? Why, why at night? Because mostly the people who cannot sleep are those people who are depressed. They self-esteem are going down. So everything is for some reason. And then uh, they show you that. Uh, so yeah, your self-esteem is going up. Your self-esteem going up. So losing weight in 10 days. And you will see, you will be Superman, Supergirl, and Superwoman in, in 10, 15 days. And that is not really a good to believe. Because what you are doing is this magic, there is no magic potions. There is no magic uh, whatever. Nothing is going to be like easy or, or magical, disappear with one pill or something. The only way to lose sustainable weight is going to be your diet and exercises, the hard way. If you are going to, uh, you can lose weight well, these are advertisement, but most likely they will lose weight uh, for 10 days, 15 days, and mostly water and water and, and, and sugar. After that, you start to gain gain the weight again. But if you do your do your diet and your and your uh, diet exercises, that is the way that you sustainable. You're going to keep your weight for long period of time. You okay with that? Fat diets, fat diets is called this, uh, fatism. fat diets is uh, everything that is kind of uh, fashionable. Everybody's doing it. 
everybody's doing it. Oh, I have good results. I have to do it too. So it's like, uh, if you do it, I, I want to do it. Something like that. But none of these uh, diets, for example, the grape uh, fruit diet, cabbage soup, the three diet, uh, three day diet, three hour diet, liquid diet, sacred heart diet. I don't know what it is. Lemon, lemonade diet. I was trying that before a long time ago. Hollywood diet, the Beverly, Beverly Hills diet, the tapeworm. Yes, they put tapeworms. They put the uh, um, worms in your body. What is doing the worm? Especially the we have the Silostomas, that is uh, uh, the Necator Americanos, that is very common in the United States. This is the lumen of the skin. I'm the I'm the worm. Uh, as a worm, I'm going to bite your your mucus of the intestine <laughs> like this, and then I start to bleed, and the blood coming to my my mouth. <laughs> so that is how is happening with these tape worms. Negative cal uh, cal calorie diet. Uh, there is this name is kind of uh, kind of funny because there is no negative energy here, right? So we it's, a, it's just a name. We are going to probably talk about a Kyberry diet, the HCG diet. So all these diets throw it away. None of these working. None of the whatever in the they show you advertisement whatever that is not totally true. I want you to hear those advertisements and tell me how much of fat you lose and how much fat, how, how long you're going to stay. Nobody's telling you, none of these advertisements telling you that it's going to be forever. Okay. All right, so grapefruit series 50s. So why I put here? Because the grapefruit probably you heard is coming and com coming, going and coming, coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. So this is coming from the series, from 19 series. They was popular at that time. And this, a, a certain time, somebody said, oh, I, I, can, I can make money doing, doing my, my juice, my special juice of grapefruit. And mostly of these diets, because you buy, you pay your money for all that, you don't want to eat anything else. You just want to eat this. And of course, if you eat this only, you're going to lose weight. There is no way. You're going to lose weight. The question is how long you're going to stay with that weight. Cabbage soup, 50s. So I'm not going to go into each of these. Negative caloric intake, is, it doesn't exist, basically. There is no calor negative caloric intake. There is no negative energy for diet. OK, the HCE is going to increase the metabolism. OK. One of the things that we want to talk about is uh, for your, for your what, for your presentation, is diabetes diet, diabetic diet, eating the healthiest food in moderate amount and sticking to regular meal times. That is huge. It's important. Diabetic patients need to be very disciplined in his diet. They need to, it's possible at the same hour every single day, for three times three meals morning evening and then uh, late evening okay because the the insulin is going to secrete it in in waves basically the thing that you have is similar as the, as the regular regular insulin that the time of effect is about eight hours so you and i normal normal pancreas are going to secrete insulin every eight hours so that's why we need to eat every, uh, we need to eat about, about three times a day because this that cycle of insulin is going to be wave, have waves up and down three times per day. And that means that insulin is going up. When the insulin is going up, they're going to try to put a lot of glucose into the cell. That is the time that the body needs the, the energy to be a part of the, activities of the cell. A diabetic diet is a healthy eating plan that is naturally rich in nutrients and low in fat and calories. So please, this is something huge too. You need to decrease to the minimum the fat. So 50, 50 series and 20%. I think it's 25% the minimum of fat, so you need to give the minimum of that range. 
the minimum of the range. So the fat should be minimum. Why fat? We don't like to eat fat in, in diabetes. Why? Because you're bioscience, there you are. So your cells need glucose. The glucose is the major source because it's easier, faster for the cell to produce ATPs from glucose. But the glucose in diabetes cannot get into the cell. So in diabetes, the insulin is not working or probably there is no insulin. It depends on the type of insulin of the diabetes. So at the end, what is happening, there is no supply of, of glucose inside the cell. Even though you have a lot of gluco glucose in the blood, you cannot make the glucose get inside the, the cell. Hyperglycemia. So the cell will not receive the glucose. So the cells are going to be like an, an uh, individual. So like you and me. If they don't eat, they're hungry. They're going to be very, very hungry. So they need to look at another source of energy. Instead, to they, they say, okay, I don't have glucose because cannot enter into the cell. So instead of that, I'm going to produce, I'm going to use fat. Fat, fat, fat. Fat produces 180 ATP, five to six times more than a molecule of glucose. But the inconvenience about the fat is that produce, at the time they produce, remember the beta oxidation that produce the acetyl-CoA, remember that? Beta yeah. oxidation, acetyl-CoA. Okay, so when that happened, the fat that is transforming acetyl-CoA to get ready, ready to get into the Krebs cycle, the acetyl-CoA, uh, in addition to do that, they are going to produce ketone bodies, ketone bodies, ketone bodies, ketone bodies. Ketone bodies, ketone bodies are going to be very acid and that can lead into metabolic acidosis. Remember we were talking about metabolic acidosis, a DKA, it's what we call DKA. They can kill the patient, coma and death. So what we need to do is to give the maximum amount of carbs, the maximum amount of proteins, and the lower um, a percentage of fat. So that is the, about diabetic meals. Okay, we got it? Yes, Dr. G. Excellent. DASH. DASH is the dietary uh, approaches to stop hypertension. Hypertension, we have hyper, uh, normal blood, uh, blood pressure, we have 120 to 80. The pre-hypertension that they do not need treatment, the pre-hypertension, basically you're doing diet and exercises. Diet and exercises in order to uh, not be uh, pre-hypertension, having pre-hypertension. What is the pre-hypertension? Is 121 to 139. 121 to 139 is the pre uh, uh, hypertension, pre hypertension, and the diastolic will be 81 to 89, 81 to 89. So that is the pre hypertension. More than 140 or more than four of 90, either way, 140 or and more than 90 diastolic. That is hypertension type one, stage one, and more than 160 or more than 100 will be stage two, very bad. So, and that is what we call diet. So you can save lives, just patient, uh, educating the patient. If you decrease only, if you decrease only five millimeters of mercury, five millimeters of mercury of the, of the patient with hypertension, of the systolic pressure, you are going to decrease the risk for myocardial infarction strokes in 30 percent just that just that so if you ask the patient educating the patient and you is you are able to decrease five percent five sorry five millimeters of mercury or the systolic pressure you are decreasing in 30 percent the risk on that patient to have myocardial infarction or strokes see can you save life right now Yes, you can start saving lives, prolong the lives. You are prolonging, you can prolong the lives of people, okay? And hypertension, just for those who are going to present hypertension, the main thing is to 
decrease the salt intake. The DRI, the daily requirement intake of sodium, is maximum two milligrams, two grams, sorry, two grams per day. So that means 2,000 milligrams per day. That is the maximum. When you are diabetic, when you are hypertensive, you need to decrease to half to 60%. So basically you're going to have like 1,000 only or up to 1,100. But the food is you're doing, you're going to give me breakfast, uh, lunch and dinner. So, but I say, you know what? The food is so ugly. I cannot, I don't want to eat your food. It's your food. It doesn't have salt, nothing. It doesn't have taste at all. So what would, what we do? Listen to this. We are going to add salt substitute, salt substitute, salt substitute. What is the salt substitute? Is that potassium? I, I mentioned that before, right? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So potassium. That is similar to the sodium. It's not the same, but it tastes similar, better than nothing. And that probably you're going to be able to make the patient to actually complete the diet, takes the corresponding diet. Okay, we got it? Yes. Elemental diet or medical liquid diet in which uh, liquid nutrients are consumed for easy of for ingestion. Uh, especially post-operative. Post-operative, do you start with liquid fluids, then you start with solid fluids, and then you can go home, eat whatever you want. Okay? Elemental diet. And that is happening because the anesthesia, the anesthesia, what is causing is decrease the peristalsis. Everything in anesthesia is going down. So low blood pressure, low respiratory rate, low temperature. Okay. Okay, so when you have kidney problem, kidney failure, one of the problems is the is the uh, the proteins. Okay, the proteins they need to be eliminated by the by the kidney. If you have a uh, if you have a large amount of protein, it can be hard for a kidney to break down. So why? Because if you eat too much proteins, if you eat too much protein, what can happen? It's going to, the excess is going to transform in what? Ammonia. Ammonia. And ammonia is transformed by the liver into? Urea. And the urea is going to be eliminated by the? Kidney. Kidney. So... If you have kidney problem, the urea cannot be eliminated. If the urea cannot be eliminated because the kidney is not working, you start to have urea elevation in blood. And that can go to the brain. It can produce some, uh, some uh, mental status problems. Okay, So you can go into encephalopathy. That means dementia, temporary dementia, because of too much urea. Urea is toxic, much more than the ammonia. Sounds good, the liver is going to change ammonia into urea because the toxicity of ammonia is lethal, it's very bad. And um, they're going to change into urea. So that is what we need to remember, the a kidney. Uh, so lo, in this case, they are going to decrease the this diet, the, lo, the levels of protein intake, protein intake. Or a ketogenic diet is the opposite. You're going to eat a lot of uh, of uh, proteins. Ketogenic diet or an other other type of ketogenic diet is when you have only high fat content, high fat content, high high fat. Okay. All right. So okay. So let's have a. What time is it? It is 11.47. Yeah, can we have a break until 12.20? Uh, 12 a lunch break or just a break? Lunch break. Okay. Because uh, it's already close to 12. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay, okay. So you're going back. Don't eat too much, okay? Remember your BMI. <laughs> <laughs> okay. now, now, are you hungry now? Okay. Starving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hungry. Put put um, in your plate BMI. BMI. 
DMI. <laughs> All 20? 20, yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Chris. I have high ghrelin, Dr. G. Good. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's worth it. I mean, yeah, yeah, go, go eat, please, please. Yeah, I'm hungry too. I'm, I'm sleepy. I, I'm trying. I'm going to take a coffee now.
Normal what? Oh, normal you, yes, yes.
Hello. Hello, Dr. G. Hi, Dr. G. Very well. Hi, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Cameras, please. Cameras, cameras. So what is who is your first patient? Who is going to what with you, you are you trying to find some patient around you? Who you're going to suggest something? My husband. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Myself. <laughs> okay. Uh Hillary, your camera, please. Three, six, seven. I need one more. <laughs> Okay, so let's start. Okay, so, oh, okay, Mia, Miss Mia. Okay, so for this, uh, we already talked about what the conclusion about all this diet. I'm not going to ask about what is a liquid diet. Well, uh, liquid diet, sorry? Are you presenting? Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Thank you. So I'm not going to ask about all these diets because it's useless to find this. Uh, I mean, some sense about these diets, especially where well, diabetic diet is a must. Dice, dash diet is a must. So this is something that we need to know. We have uh, the ketogenic diet. Some people use it, uh, for, exa for example, um, for to treat epilepsy. So there are some medical treatments. So we know that, for example, you need to be careful. When you have uh, a, too much, a, too much, a, all right, so too much of the fat of carbohydrates, for example, or, or too much of the um, proteins, they're going to use, they're going to use some keto. So because what happened is that it looks like, we don't know what is the reason, but ketogenic diet, it decrease, decrease the, the recurrency of uh, epileptic attacks, for example, okay? A healthy diet, uh, so in this case, you need to decrease your proteins because the urea is not handled very well for by, by the kidney. Elemental diet is basically liquid-only diet. Basically, is after surgery. After surgery, you need to keep in consideration that we have peristalsis. It's, lo it's low, it's down. It's not totally blocked, but it's, it's, it's low and uh, can produce constipation. So that's why they use that uh, liquid diet. And remember this, this is ankles Hesse. When you have any surgery, they promote, they want you to walk, to walk in the first 24 hours, because in the first 24 hours, you need to do your bowel movement. So you need to do poo in the, that is the desire. Otherwise, uh, if, uh, why do you need to walk? Because walking stimulate the peristalsis. Walking stimulate peristalsis. After post surgery, you can go to your bottle with sodium chloride, whatever, uh, and they are going to go to the bathroom and then small walks that stimulate that. So that's why they uh, they want you to walk in the first 24 hours and make a BM bowel movement in the first 24 hours. If you don't, in two days, in two days the stools are going to stay longer time there, produce reabsorption of, of water produce constipation is what we call fecal impactation impact it's like a brick inside so it's very very dry okay so you already know that obesity what is going to do is to increase the risk for some diseases chronic diseases right so obesity basically you need to uh, uh, remember the metabolic syndrome metabolic syndrome and you can recognize who is under metabolic syndrome it's a person with normal size head neck upper extremities normal upper extremities and thorax normal but the belly is like this like a like an apple right normal legs normal legs but the central is what you call central obesity central obesity metabolic syndrome 
of central obesity. And this metabolic syndrome is the origin of diabetes mellitus for hypertension. And as a consequence of this, they can lead into myocardial infarctions and they can lead into strokes. Okay? All right. So basically, these, these guys, do they eat, eat whatever they want, salt, sweet, uh, fast food, everything that is, uh, I mean, unhealthy and no exercises at all. So it's doing everything opposite that should be done. Other types of try to lose weight is to resect partially, partially the stomach. The most common is the gastric banding. The gastric banding, what it's doing is to uh, decrease the, decrease the, uh, uh, increase the distension of the initial portion of the stomach. That distension are going to decrease the ghrelin, the ghrelin. So your appetite is going down. Others, they can produce resection of the stomach. They can produce bypass of the stomach. The most common is the gastric banding. And the benefit and the good thing about the gastric banding is that uh, can lead, they, they can remove the band and you can actually return to what it was before. Okay. So, all right, so we need to be realistic when you want to lose weight you need to realistically make a plan. So what is a plan? A plan is to lose one to two pounds maximum in a week, per week. So don't be happy if you lose one or two pounds per day. That is basically water and carbohydrates. You are not losing anything. You're not losing anything. So to have a steady, progressive loss weight and to maintain the weight, that is the most important, to maintain the weight, are going to be losing one pound to two pounds uh, per week. And that is decreasing 500 kilocalories per day, per uh, kilocalories per day, and plus your exercise is about one hour to uh, one hour and a half. You can do it this every other day, or you can you can do it two or three times at, at least during a week, three per week. Okay, we got it. Yes. All right. So, uh, all right. So goals. Okay. Mm, okay. So that is the same. All right. So there were. It's not one to two pounds. Sorry, it's half pound to one pound per week. So it's even less. I was not sure. Well, one well, half pound or one pound per week. That is what we need to lose per week. Okay? Half pound to per week. All right. All right. So let's see. So we know that. So I'm going to remind what you want to you I want you to know to remember. So Anorexia, we talk about anorexia nervosa and anorexia. So what is the difference between them? And that is the part I want. Okay. So energy in and energy out. I know that we was talking that in the BMR, right? What is a BMR, please? BMR? Basal metabolic rate. Basal metabolic rate. And how much is for a female? How much is the BMR? And for a male? Right? What else? Yes or no? Okay, so let's go here. Okay. Look at this. This is what we was calculating in the previous uh, classes, right? That is the general formula for BMR. BMR. So there is a lot of applications here. Uh, everybody calculate your body, uh, your BMR, please. Girls and, and, and boys, okay? So let's do it. 
All right, so email is one kilocalorie per uh, 79 kilos times 24. So that is the, my BMR. So 79 times 24 is in kilograms. I'm not So that is, for me, it's 1,896 kilocalories per day. Everybody got your BMR? Yeah. So you already know what is your BMR. What is the BMR? It's the minimum, it's the amount of kilocalories of energy that you require in a day just to uh, supply energy to all the vital signs, all the vital functions of your body, respiration, cardiovascular, etc. okay? mental activity okay all right so that is the bmr so we already calculate the bmr so i'm going to write down 1896 you already know how to calculate the bmr let's go to the to this okay so here we have what we call the tdee tdee this is the complete formula so that is where we was talking before uh, TDEE is uh, the BMR we was talking before. Now we are going to add a TDE. That is the complete. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the whole the whole topic we are going to talk about. That. TDEE is the total daily energy expenditure. So that is the total amount that you using in a day. So if you see here, you calculate the BMR, the BMR, and then you are going to multiply by the activity factor activity factor activity factor okay if you have so you everybody right now is here tdee equal, equal bmr times multiplication 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 or the activity factor if you are sick you're going to multiply by the injury factor if you you're not sick you don't put this you put plus 500 kilocalories if you're lactating or 300 about kilocalories if you are pregnant okay so if you are pregnant you're going to use bmr times uh, activity factor times um, a plus the uh, 300 kilo calories during pregnancy if you are already uh, lactating you're going to just uh, not use the uh, 300 kilocalories but you're going to use bmr times activity factor plus plus the 500 kilocalories in, in lactating. Okay, we got that? Mm -hmm. yes? yes? Okay, so now, so let's go to the uh, the metabolic card. We already talked about that, so I want to go to this. All right, so let's calculate whatever we, we want. All right, so listen to this. So you already know, I want to write down in the paper, put like I'm doing right now, is the TDEE, Total Daily Energy Expenditure, and you're going to write down BMR times, also times multiplication, please, multiplication activity factor. So that's what we are right now. So you calculate the BMR, and the BMR for me is 1,896 times multiplied by the activity factor. And this is a sliding card here. Look at this. So BMR times activity factor. So activity level, that is the activity factor. So this is the range of activity factor. You are going to multiply your, uh, your what? Your, um, your uh, BMR width. So sedentary life, mostly sitting or standing, are you at this moment? It's 1.2 to 1.3. Light aerobic exercises, 30 to 45 minutes, three times per week you're going to multiply by 1.4. Moderate exercise for one hour, 30, uh, three to five times a week, you multiply by 1.5. Active exercises almost every day for over one hour is 1.6, 1.7. So if you're going to do, you're going to lose weight, probably you need to use this, 1.6, 1.7. Athletes are going to be up to two, okay? so. As you say here, you do not need to memorize these activity factors. So if we are going, if you give, if I give you, when I give you an equation, I'm going to give you the activity factor. The rest you're going to calculate. So now in my case, 
I do exercises one hour, three to five times a week. That is a uh, minimum I do. It. So I multiply by 1.5. So my BMR was 1,896. So calculate yourself too, your, yours. And that means that my total TDEE will be 2,844. Two thousand eight hundred forty-four. Okay, everybody got got your calculation. Everybody got it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to do another slide here, and I'm going to start doing this. All right. So I calculate by me my BMR. My BMR was one kilocalorie for girls is uh, 0 0.9 times my weight in kilograms times 24 hours. And uh, my BMR now results into 1,896 kilocalories. Kilocalories per, per day, All right? So now, but my TDEE, my total daily energy expenditure is going to be my BMR times, times what? The activity factor. So my activity factor, as I mentioned, is 1.5. And my BMR was 1,896. So my total daily energy expenditure in a day will be 2,800. 44 kilo calories per day. You got that? Okay, no, no that, but but you you got the your TDEE? -E? Yes. Okay. Now for this is this is your actual weight, correct? Based on your actual actual weight, yes or no? Correct. Okay. So from this, if I want to lose weight about half pound to one pound that is the ideal per week i need to decrease decrease 500 kilocalories from this total correct yes or no uh -huh. so that means that is going to be the my new tdee that i want in order to lose weight is going to be 2344 kilo calories per day so that is my my goal correct plus exercises of course then for this you need to do your uh, how many carbs how many proteins and how many fat so 50 percent carbs is going to be a 30 percent fat carbs fat and uh, the other one is 20% proteins, correct? Yeah. So for this, I'm going to get 2,344, 2,344 divided by 2, that is the 50%, I need to have 1,172 kilocalories of carbohydrates, correct? Correct. Yes. 30% of 2,344 divided by, okay, I multi multiply by 30% to make it more precisely. Uh, no, uh, 2,344 times 30 divided by 100 is going to be 703 in fat, kilocalories, fat. From this 20%, it will be divided by 5, 2,344. Uh, 2,344 divided by 5 is going to be 468, 469 kilocalories of proteins. Okay? So that means that I'm going to write it down here. 
I should write smaller in order to put everything in one page. Anyhow. All right, so we have here carbohydrates. It's going to be 1,700, 172 kilocalories per day. Protein, uh, fat, let's do fat, just to fill the, the, the sequence, 703 kilocalories per day. And, and what, and proteins, I will have 469 kilocalories per day. So now I want to know how many grams are going to need per day, grams, all right? So if I know, I'm going to make the calculation here. If I know that uh, in one gram of carbohydrates, we have four kilocalories, how many grams are going to be in 1,172? If you do the whole calculation, is going to be 1,172 divided by four. You follow me or no? You follow me? Hello? Are you yes, calculating? I think so. Yes. Yeah. So that means 293 in carbs. So here, so if I have a fat, if I have one gram of fat that contain nine kilocalories, how many grams of fat I need in 703? And I'm going to divide 703 divided by nine. And that means 78 grams, grams, grams of fat. And for proteins, if I have one gram of protein that contains four kilocalories, how many grams of protein I will have in 469? So 469 divided by four, oops, what happened? Divided by four is equal to say 117. Yes, yes, 117 uh, of grams of, of protein. So that is my diet. So now, what I want to do is this. After you have all this amount of the carbs, whatever, you have three meals, correct? Three meals. Yes. Okay. Breakfast, breakfast depends what you want, but you need to have, depends what is your activity, what is, when are you doing exercises. So if you are uh, doing exercises, you need to do it after, right? So better to do exercise in the morning so your, your meal in the afternoon, in the lunch is going to be higher. So there is no rules about that. So you can, from 230, 23 uh, grams of carbs, you can put, just make it 30% in the morning. So you divide it by three, 293 divided by three. That is going to be 90, 98 grams. 78, I'm going to divide in, in 30%. Let's put it the 78 by three is 26 grams. Come on, grams. And proteins, I know 30%. So you can add a little bit here and there. Depends what you want. It's not precisely exactly, right? But it's about, right? So 117 divided by three is going to be 39 grams of protein. 39. Okay? If you go, for example, to have a steak, one steak, one steak, and the steak we have, I think we have, uh, who is in the, who knows this? Eight ounces, right? And there we have 12 ounces, right? Of steak. Yes or no? We have six ounces yeah, too. We have sixteen as well. Six. We have six too, right? There is six. I know that it's eight and twelve, but there is a six. Or no? I don't know. All right. So by sure, I have uh, have one of these steaks that you see eight ounces of a steak. That means that it's going to be about 
uh, one ounce is about 30 grams. So uh, eight by, by 30 is 240 grams. So that is take 240 grams and I need for myself 170. So I need to eat four ounces only a day. And so on. So that's what you can calculate. So for example, one spoon of sugar is going to contain about five grams, a little spoon, five grams. If you have a tablespoon, 15 grams, but mostly we use uh, a table uh, tissue, right? So this is about five to 10, 10 grams of, 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 of uh, sugar. But just you need to realize that the food itself have carbs. The meat, for example, have carbs and fat. The uh, uh, vegetables, are mostly carbs and, and, pro and some protein, some protein, but mostly it's fiber. So we are not going to count that as a, as a, yeah, carbohydrates. Yeah, they have carbohydrates, so, but it's not digestible. So carbs are going to basically to produce effect to uh, produce this fullness in your stomach and uh, decrease the appetite, that's all, and the vitamins, of course, vitamins and minerals. Carbs could be, for example, rice. You like rice? Rice? Yes. Yes, very good, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I prepare a good rice, by the way. You know, you you need to put some vinegar to make it more white. The, and what, vinegar? Would it taste... Um... Can you taste the vinegar with the rice? No, 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 not at all. Nobody can tell you that is just what? just uh, one spoon or two spoons of, of vinegar. It's not going to be. It's not going to taste. Wash it very well to uh, to take all the starch because when you wash the a rice, there's coming like a, a like a fluid that is kind of uh, uh, with with the starch coming out. So until it's clear the water, you clean all the starch. You're, you're eating less starch. If you want, the, huh? Isn't it the horchata? Isn't it um from from like rice water? Uh, I'm not used on that. Uh, okay. I'm, yeah, I, I I'm not familiar with that because that is Mexican, right? Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. So I think so. Yeah, they use. I'm not. I don't know how they cook it. Yes, it is. Uh, rice water with the, lemon. <laughs> oh, wow, lemon. And uh, and you put at the end at the end important for the rice, huh? important for the rice. When the, the rice is already cooked, you put oil, like oil, olive oil, and put it with a knife, with a knife, with a fork. Try to move it and cover it, and that is going to be very uh, the gra the grain is going to be no sticky. It's going to be separate. Very nice, very nice. You can put some cardamom there if you want, but basically changing the flavor. So yes, the vinegar and the oil at the end. So it's going to be very nice. And you have a nice rice. Rice, we have cereals, like uh, for example, I mean, uh, carbohydrates is the beans. The beans have high content of proteins and it's a good food because it contains starch, yes, and protein, very high content of proteins, okay? Now, uh, Always you need to keep your 50, 30, and 20%. So now your plate at the beginning was like this. Now your plate is going to shrink, but with keeping the 50 and 30 and 20%. Okay? Yes. So uh, as a summary, uh, you, calculate your, you calculate your BMR, you calculate the TDEE, and you want to increase or decrease your, if you want to gain weight, you go, you are going to increase about 500 uh, kilocalories to 700. If you, that is when it's a kind of uh, slow, a slow gaining weight. But if you go gaining weight faster, that is uh, about 700 to 1000 kilocalories per day added to your TDEE, actual TDEE. Nice, right? So yes. who is going to be your first uh, consultation? Who is going to be your first patient? Myself. Okay. okay, all right. So try to find some patient and say, okay. oh, where do you learn that? Oh, I'm in the school, that's all. I just <laughs> learned. So, Dr. G. Yes, can you, Norella. 
can you go over like all of the mathematical calculations in one big problem? In big problem, okay, I don't know. I want to have time for the rest, so let's see. Oh, there are is you, another, another one. rounding? My, yeah, I'm rounding, yeah. Like to the whole number or to the tens? No, it's, the ten is not going to be a big difference, Nailani. So this is, this, this, this no go to the decimal. So just round it. So one or two, three calories less or more, that's fine. Okay. So your, your main goal is, is, is just uh, or gain or to lose weight. Okay. okay? Is, is the exam going to be multiple choice or are we going to have to fill in the answers? No, no, always multiple choice. Okay. Another way that is a long way to calculate the BMR is this formula. So what is about this formula is something important. Do you need to memorize this formula? The answer is no. No, but I want you to tell me what conclusion I can have from this formula. So this formula, remember we was having 0 0.9 in female, 1 in, in male. More accurate is this formula. But it's no more, no, it's not the difference of 10%, no more. So it's basically the same. All right, so, but I want to make a conclusion about this. Who can tell me first? Okay, let's just start. We have BMR. 655, 4.35 times weight in pounds, plus 4.7 height in inches, and uh, minus the 4.7 times h in years. Here we have weight, uh, we have the formula and formula. What, what is the conclusion that you can get from this? What do you think could be? Somebody? Say that again. Which one? Yeah. Which, which what conclusion you can get from this slide? What could could be one some of the conclusions that you can get from this slide? Uh, BMR depends on your weight, height, and age. Beautiful. That is what I want to hear. Excellent. So the BMR is going to depend on the weight, on the gender, on the height, and age. Got it? Yes. So, so that is going to be, the BMR is going to change with age. So if you see here, your basic metabolic rate is going to diminish with age, yes or no? Yes. Right? Yes. So with age, you need less, less what? Less, uh, less caloric intake. But when you get older, you start to eat more. Yes or no? <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, and your metabolic rate go down. So that's why you gain about half a pound, a, a, half a pound a year. Half a pound a year. So that's why when I lose, when I lose weight, I said, oh, I, I, I'm two, one year older, younger, two years younger, three years younger, so I'm losing. So basically I lost like 12 pounds, so I, I am six years younger now. <laughs> but I need to keep losing, okay? You know what, I will tell you something. When I came to United States, uh, in Peru, when you say hello to somebody, you give a kiss. Doesn't matter if you don't know or you know the person. It's a girl. It's a, a girl in the, between male and female, of course, right? But so, on, on the cheek, right? In the cheek, yeah, yeah. Hello, how are you? In Philippines is like that. Um, back then it was like that, but nowadays it's 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 not common. Yeah, but when I came here, I nobody told me anything. So, <laughs> so when somebody introduced me to somebody, I was kissing everybody, and. Uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I gained, uh, and by the way, I gained a lot of friends with that. So, <laughs> so that. yeah. And uh, and the other thing is that in in South America is is a good it's a good taste to tell you, oh, how are you doing? Oh, you gained weight. Oh, you look fantastic. You're very healthy. And I was doing the same when I came here. <laughs> 
oh my god you 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 look, look uh, you have a good weight you gain weight right so and i was uh, with a smiling in my face i'm so stupid my god and they there was very kind of uh, offended yeah they they was offended sometimes but they understood i, I explained that but i I'm, i was tired to explain oh, again and again so i stopped doing that so here in the United States to say, oh, you gain weight, that is kind of offensive. But in Peru means that you are gaining weight because you are healthy. You are healthy. That is the way. Okay? All right. So don't kiss anybody, please. Okay. All right. But in... Um, and then I was having my friends from Spain. Uh, in Spain, in Spain, they kiss twice. In Brazil, too, they kiss right and left or left and right. Mwah, mwah, they kiss. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of... Well, right now, for me, it's kind of invasive. So, you know, I've been living here 20-plus years here. And uh, now if somebody coming to me just to kiss me from the nothing, for nothing, it's the kind of invasive. So I changed already my mind. We kiss back home. Oh, oh uh, my pup, oh, my God. You, you can see, I, I kiss my papa very much. His head, his ear, his neck, everything I kiss him. So have him, my mother the same. My sisters, well, not so much, but my father and my mother, yes. I kiss their hands, everything, yeah. All right, so let's keep going. So r right now you are in different level. You already know how you, you can be consulted by somebody to lose weight or to gain weight. Okay. Yes. All right. So fifty percent, thirty percent, and twenty percent is what we already mentioned. Okay. Oh, by the way, you want an exercise, Snorilani? Let's see if we can find the time at the end, please. Okay. Let me see if we have some some example. Okay. Okay. So let me see. For example, okay. Uh, okay. So let's read this. For example, if your TDEE ended up in 1,950 1, kilocalories per day, then your daily dietary caloric intake should be also around this amount to maintain your current body weight. But yeah, you can maintain your calorie, your, your body weight. And it's a way to lose weight, I guess, because next year you will be, if you're not doing anything, you will gain, you will gain a half a pound free and uh, that is because the metabolism with age start to go lower correct okay okay so uh, let me see i don't have any example here yeah there is no no example but you know in the exam i'm going to ask you uh, the tdee -E. okay so i'm going to give you just the weight I'm going to give you the. Uh, uh, I'm going to give you the weight. You there's two different uh, exercises. I want you to calculate the BMI. BMI. If the BMI is overweight, is overweight. The next question is telling telling you how they are going to decrease weight. So you you're going to calculate the um, the. Um, I'm going to give you the weight. You calculate the BMR. And I tell you, the patient is athlete. The patient is couch potato resting all day. The patient is a student. The patient is uh, doing some exercises. So you decide which which is the activity factor. And then, if there is underweight, you can increase 500. Or if there is overweight or obese, you need to decrease 500. Okay. And then, then you are going to calculate how many kilocalories. Uh, you require for proteins, for carbohydrates and proteins. And then you will tell me how many grams of this and that will be obtained daily. And you, you can do your diet, whatever diet you want, but divide it by three. Okay? Uh, Leilani, uh, Noilani, so I'm going to try to find some exercises. I don't have any here. Okay? So let's try that at the end. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so in diabetes, that is the last part of the of the that we are going to talk. I'm going to show you. I'm going to teach you what is important about diabetes. Uh, there's a lot to talk about that. So, 
I'm going to give you advance because this group is, I, this group deserves it very much, seriously. So I'm going to give you the candies of diabetes mellitus. So, but basically we already know what we need to eat, right? How we need to eat, right? So in diabetes mellitus, you need to be strictly, uh, very much disciplined into it three times a day, three times a day, three times a day. Divide all the calorie intake that you require in, uh, so it's a balanced diet, 50 and 30%, but the range, you're going to give less fat as possible, but the minimum range of the range of fat, and you can increase your proteins and you can increase your carbohydrates, or you can play between carbs and proteins, basically, okay? All right, so what is diabetes mellitus? And I'm trying to make a summary, like a, a like a very straight, in order to understand a few things. It's one o'clock, so we're okay. Diabetes mellitus. We have diabetes mellitus type one and type two. The type one is 10% of all the people. Type 2 is 90%. Gestational diabetes, we have one every six, every seven uh, uh, gestation, uh, uh, patients with, diabetes, with uh, pregnancy that can develop diabetes mellitus. All right, so this type 1 is called the juvenile. And this 90% is the adult. This type 1 diabetes, you have the pancreas, this is the pancreas, and the pancreas are going to produce insulin that are going to go to the bloodstream. So, in diabetes type 1, there is no insulin. No insulin. There is no insulin at all in type 1. So, that's why, what is the treatment? The treatment, this means treatment, means uh, give insulin, injectable injections okay insulin injections in diabetes type 2 there is what we call resistance to the insulin what is the resistance to the insulin is basically that we have the cell here this is the insulin coming here this is the doorbell doorbell somebody is trying to get in or what this is the doorbell and here we have the glucose. I mean, somebody's trying to get in. Yes, Kyla. Okay, Miss Kyla, thank you. Welcome. All right, so. All right, so let's continue. So the glucose is here. And what happened with the glucose? The glucose need to get into the cell. So what is doing the insulin? The insulin is ringing the bell, ring, ring, ring the bell, and the doors are going to open for the glucose coming in. So insulin resistance means that the ring bell is not working. So nobody can open the door for the glucose. So the glucose starts to accumulate in the bloodstream. And that is going to cause hyperglycemia. Right? You follow me? Uh-huh. Yes. And here, in, in the case there is no insulin, there is nobody who knocked the door. So the glucose starts to go higher in blood. That is hyperglycemia. So in both cases are going to happen hyperglycemia. We okay with that? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Now I want to focus. Do you know somebody who has diabetes mellitus? Probably yes, right? Yes. So yes. now, what are the signs and symptoms? So signs and symptoms of diabetes mellitus. So this diabetes mellitus can be, is going to be the three P's. The first P is the poly, polyphagia. The second P is going to be polyurea. The third P will be the polydipsia. Polyphagia means you eat, 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 very hungry. Polyur poly polyuria, you pee, 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 a lot of pee. Polydipsia means drink, 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 you drink a lot. 
So those are the three signs and symptoms of diabetes mellitus. Okay? Yes. Okay. All right. So this, the signs and symptoms of diabetes mellitus is the same to say signs and symptoms of, of, of hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia. So the signs and symptoms, if I tell you signs and symptoms of hyperglycemia, all the signs and symptoms of diabetes mellitus are the same. It's the same thing. You okay with that? Yes, sir. I can move the race. All right. Okay. So that is, oh, by the way, one thing. Diabetes means like faucet. Faucet. I, I don't know if that faucet the, from the water. And mellitus means sweet. Sweet. So it's a fluid that is sweet. It's not testable. In the past, you know, they didn't have lab tests or something. They was testing directly the urine. That was like in the 1800s. I will tell you, I was, you know, I was working by the World Health Organization. I, I was doing a lot of tours in the jungle. And there, sometimes I didn't have anything with me. And I, didn't ha I don't carry the whole laboratory test on my shoulders because there's every, it's a long distance to walk, etc. And, and I was suspecting somebody who had diabetes mellitus because he told me that he has this PPP, polyphagia, polyuria, polydipsy, asking. And I don't have a lab test, so how I confirm that? So I went, I told him, go to the to, to the tree behind the, the place and pee in the tree. And then come back. And then when I came back, after one hour, two hours, I, I went to see where you pee. Okay, you pee here, and I found a lot of ants. <laughs> That's it. Okay, you have, this is a laboratory test for diabetes mellitus. Why? Because the ants, they love sugar. Whatever sugar they are, they want to, to get there. So that's why. So that is telling you that the, the pee are going to eliminate sugar when it's in excess in your body. Excess in your body. The, all right, so let's talk about the... I don't want to talk too much about pathophysiology, but definitely there's much more to talk about that. But anyhow. So just remember the PPP, correct? Okay, there is many more things that we need to learn, but I'm just giving you some selective, se selectively some some stuff. Okay, so now, uh, okay, so what? Else? Okay, so what we need to know uh, that I'm trying to relate to nutrition about diabetes mellitus is this: to understand that the problems of diabetes mellitus in general are going to have complications. These complications, when somebody is texting me about something, oh, so they're asking me, uh, they're asking me if uh, what is the room for just go to the school i will be there and i'm going to tell you because it could be room number one or number number four or six i don't know yet but i send a communication that is going to be room number one or six four or six four or six four or six okay we got it when we that is for the final exam final exam Oh, by the way, you, no, I'm making mistake. You are, you are not pharmacology. Pharmacology, I have HESI this week. This Friday, I have HESI. And the next week is going to be final. But the same for you guys. You're going to do the final exam in campus, on campus. And for that, I need to... I send you already email or no? Not yet, right? Not yet. Yeah, not yet. I'm going to send it in the next few <coughs> few days. Okay, complications. The complications will be very, uh, 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 basically three. Number one is ret retinopathy. Number two, nephropathy. Number three, neuropathy. So retinopathy, uh, diabetes mellitus can get blindness, blind, blindness. Nephropathy, 
can get into kidney failure. Number one cause, number, number one cause of uh, kidney transplant are caused by, by diabetes mellitus. Yeah. In California, in the United States, we have about 35,000. And right now, it's like 40,000 people waiting just for kidney transplant in a year. Neuropathy means neuropathy is going to produce a numbness, numbness of the skin. Okay? I want to know one more thing here. Remember, this is the heart. Very simple. The aorta, can you see the aorta here? The aorta is coming, correct? The more distal, this is distal, this is proximal, and you can imagine the your hands, your feet, your stomach, whatever, the, the branches, the, the aorta are going to start getting more thinner and thinner, the branches are going to be thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. The more distal they go, the thinner is going to be. So, and that is your fingers, are your fingers, your toes. That is going to explain you a lot of stuff. Okay, so that is one thing. The important thing is why the retinopathy and nephropathy and neuropathy are happening. Let's talk about a normal vessel. A normal vessel is going to be like this. We have the lumen, the tunica media, the tunica media, the tunica adventitia, correct? But what happens when you have diabetes mellitus? And that is something that is not explained like this in the book. So I'm giving you something that is, uh, many people avoid that, I don't like, it's so simple. That is going to help you understand everything, everything about diabetes mellitus. All right, so here we have the lumen. So what happened in diabetes mellitus is that you have the same vessel here, the same vessel, the same size, whatever it is. And here we have a lot of glucose a lot of glucose, a lot of glucose. This glucose that is high in the bloodstream, I want you to put, for example, put water, water on the table. Water on the table. Leave it there for a few minutes. You clean it, that's it. No problem, right? But I want you to put now water with sugar on the table. Just drain it on the, on the, on the, so what happened? You clean it, it's going to be, the glucose is getting attached to the table, yes or no? It's like a sticky, right? Yes or no? Yes. So yeah. that is what happened in diabetes mellitus with the, in the long run. So imagine in the long run, for years, they're having the same problem. This glucose in touch with the endothelium, in touch with the endothelium. So what happened here? So the vessel, I'm going to draw it the same here, same, same vessel here same vessel, but same size of the vessel. But what happened? This glucose in, are reacting with the tunica intima and with the tunica media. And what happened? The tunica media start to get bigger because of an inflammation, chronic, that is going to stay there. So at the end, what happened? The vessel's lumen is going to be like this. It's narrow compared with the normal. Big, the glucose reaction, Going to increase the thickening of the media, the thickening of the tunic media become hypertrophy. And what happened? You have a narrow lumen at the end. So that means that is in diabetes mellitus. So what happened then? That means that you have less oxygen, you have less nutrients, yes or no? Yes. And it's not vasoconstriction, huh? it's not vasoconstriction, but works like a vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction will be. Vessel constriction will be like this. See, all the vessel become smaller, but here only just that lumen because the tunica media is bigger. That's it. It's not a vessel constriction, but works as a vessel constriction because if you narrow the lumen, you basically it's like you are increasing the peripheral resistance, and that's why patients with diabetes mellitus suffer from hypertension. You okay with that? Yes. yes, sir. Okay, so now the retinopathy, we have the eye, and you know the three the three letters, right? I the in the more inner is the retina, that is the continuation of the optic nerve. 
The middle layer is the choroid membrane that contains all the vessels. Vessels. And this vessel choroid membrane, if you remember the middle layer of the eye layers, are going to give blood supply to the retina. But these vessels, with they go from the aorta, the branches go, go up to the carotid artery, whatever, and they are going to be very tiny, tiny, tiny vessels. The more distal they go to the from the body, the more tiny vessels. And that what's happened? In addition to that, diabetes is going to narrow the lumen even more. It's already tiny because of the location. But if you have diabetes, this lumen is going to be even narrow. So the retina do not receive blood supply and the retina start to die little by little. And what is the function of the retina? Retina to produce vision, correct? That is number one. So you already understand why is that. That nephropathy, nephropathy, why? You, or, you know that we have one million nephrons every kidney, each kidney. One million on the right, one million on the left. But each, uh, well, nephrons. Nephrons is a functional unit. And, the, and these nephrons are not there for, for, I mean, they need oxygen and nutrients. They're alive. The cells are composed by alive cells, the nephrons. The nephrons is not like a glass. It's like an object. No, it's are composed by cells. And they need oxygen and they need nutrients. And what happened if you have the glomerulus here, glomerulus here, we have the afferent arteriole, we have the capillary here, and the efferent arteriole. From these branches are going to come blood supply to the walls of the proximal, distal, and hernia's loop tubules. So, but these vessels are so tiny that, that they're going to decrease the lumen, so the nephrons start to die one by one, one by one, they start to die, because there is no receiving enough oxygen and blood supply. And that can lead into nephropathy, nephropathy. So, number two. Number three, we have a nerve. We have, this is your finger. And here, your finger, you have terminal nerves. Nerves, nerves that are going to have, that is the tactile receptors, right? That's why you feel. But now these nerves, the nerves, this nerve, they need oxygen and they need nutrients. But because the vessels are like this, narrow, that is going to receive less oxygen and less nutrients. So the nerves are starting to die and you start to feel this numbness, tingling, especially in the distal portions of your body because as you mentioned here, the more distal they go the vessels to the body, the more narrow we come. And that is where is in the area mostly start these problems with diabetes mellitus. And that is the neuropathy. So what happened, this patient is coming to you, is telling you, you know, doctor, uh, nurse, uh, when, when I walk, when I walk, I feel I'm walking over cottons. I feel that I'm walking over blankets, over cottons. This is typically classical. And what happened is that the nerves are being dying. So that the, the patient do not feel the floor. So they have a risk for injuries because they don't feel it. They can, in their hands, they can burn their hands and they don't feel it because the nerves, the neuropathies, the peripheral nervous system is being distally is going to be affected. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Another thing that is happening, and please, this is related to nutrition, is that, uh, you know, that the uh, peristalsis, the peristalsis, the peristalsis of the GI tract, peristalsis of the GI tract, so the peristalsis of the GI tract is happening because there is electrical con electrical impulses, right? Remember giant cut? Giant cut? The yes. giant cut is going to electrical impulse release the acetylcholine. And the, the intestines, the tunica media of the intestines, the, uh, the middle layer of the intestines is composed by smooth muscle. And this is smooth muscle, they need to receive electrical impulses from the nervous system in order to produce that contraction and relaxation that results into the peristalsis. So these nerves in diabetes mellitus are going to be affected too. They are not going to, uh, they are going to, the nerves that uh, are attached to the intestines are going to die one by one. So you start to decrease your peristalsis. And what happened with diabetes mellitus, they can lead into, into uh, constipation. Another, another organs that are going to be affected is the gallbladder, the gallbladder. The gallbladder, re remember the CCK, the cholecystokinin, 
that CCK cholecystokinin is released by the duodenum when the food is passing through the duodenum, cholecystokinin go to the bloodstream and they go to the gallbladder and pancreatic and the pancreas. In the in the gallbladder, produce the contraction of the gallbladder. But this or uh, uh, CCK is basically need to look for uh, receptors. These receptors they need oxygen and, and blood supply. In diabetes mellitus, the blood supply and oxygen is very poor there. So the gallbladder will not be able to contract properly. Do not put uh, the do, do not uh, going to send the whole bile needed. So what you have in this case diarrhea. See constipation on one side they can lead into diarrhea why diarrhea malabsorption because if you don't have enough bile and you have in uh, too much uh, fat that's why you need in nutrition to decrease the fat because your gallbladder is not going to release the whole bile because it's not responding to the electrical impulses why because it's less nerves why less nerves because they're dying because they don't receive enough oxygen and enough nutrients because of the diminish of the lumen of the of the vessels. See, we okay with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So one more thing I was saying to say. I was going to say something. Oh, okay. All right. So that is diabetes mellitus. So. Definitely, you need to be careful with the digestion of the patient. That is all, not only the retinopathy, nephropathy, and neuropathy. One thing: do you, if you, do you know? No, you can, you can, you can um, answer me this, and I want you to answer this. Tell me: do you know that the patient with diabetes mellitus, when they have an injury in their feet, in their hand, whatever they have an injury? they take longer time to heal yes yeah yep yeah why do you think blood circulation exactly and why is that because the the narrowing of the of the vessels all right so that means when you 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 have a healing process you have a wound you need a lot of oxygen for the chemical reactions to make cell divisions and replace the cells who are being damaged and in addition, you need to have a lot more nutrition, more nutrients in that area in order to heal faster. But in diabetes mellitus, the narrowing of the vessels are going to be a consequence of diabetes mellitus. And that is going to be a delay on the oxygen and nutrient supply. So that's why in diabetes mellitus, it's going to take longer to heal. See? So how you are going to, how you going to, in addition to that, diabetes mellitus, in order to make a summary, and in order, to, if somebody asks you or some, you want to explain, what is, why is happening the complications, no signs and symptoms. I'm talking about the complications. No sign, so signs and symptoms are going to be PPP, but the complications are going to be basically retinopathy, it's going to be nephropathy, neuropathy. Other complications will be malabsorption, diarrhea, constipation. And many others and i'm not going i'm just trying not to go but everything have the same explanation the same explanation uh what else are going to say uh what's i going to say something wait i forgot okay <laughs> any questions so far no you you are you are you're surprised, you're mute. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, um, Mr. Keith. It's, it's a lot of information, but. Yeah, so I'm going to tell you what we are going to, uh, we are going to basically talk to you about this. So at this moment, we already talk about the TDEE. -E. This is a must, correct? All right, so you already know how to do the TDEE. -E -E. And, uh, and how to calculate your diet for one day, correct? Okay. Yes. So in diabetes, uh, how does incidence of diabetes affect nursing care? So we have, in United States, we have 32 million 
patients with diabetes. We have 1.5 million new cases in a year. We have about 6 to 10 million people pre-diabetic. Okay? And the pre-diabetic, basically what is going to happen in these patients, they, are, they suffer from hypertension. They can die from myocardial infarction. They can die from strokes. Strokes. What is the role of patient education in prevention management of this disorder? Please. The most common, 90% of the cases, are going to be diabetes type 2. Okay? And listen to this. It's considered that 95% of the treatment will be diet and exercises. Please, diet, the connotation of diet here is not to lose weight. Diet is the food that you're eating. Okay? Okay? Why exercises? Why exercises are critical for, for diabetes mellitus? Why? To lose weight? No, no, no. You, no, you don't necessarily need to lose weight in diabetes. Exercises, why? Why Which, exercises? Uh, are, the function of the peristalsis when you walk around in the name. Okay. All right. This is something I metabolism? mentioned. Sorry? Son, sonambulism? Increase their metabolism. Oh, okay. Yes, you are, you are in that way, in the pathway. So I mentioned that classes before. Remember when I was doing why we need to do exercises at the beginning of nutrition? Why do we need exercise? Because it's good for, for health? That is it's not enough. Huh? It's essential for, for life. Essential for life. That is too general, mister. <laughs> is this your... Huh? All right. So what happened is this. Listen, when you are doing exercises, when you're doing exercises, when you're doing exercises, you are forcing your muscles to work. Yes or no? Right. Okay. So that means that the requirements of oxygen are increased. So your muscles, they need more oxygen if you are regularly doing exercises. Yes or no? Right. Yes? Okay. That is one. one Let's turn the page on the other side. It's not true. It's, it's true that when you have a boon in your hand, we are going to come back in the previous. If you have a boon in your hand or any part of your body, when you have an, a cut here, tell me, are you cutting arteries and veins too? A small vessels? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Right, right? Yes. And the healing process, what does it mean? That healing process means that you are going to regenerate the tissue and you are going to re re uh, uh, replace the vessels, yes or no? The vessels are not going to be cut for the rest of your life. They are going to recanalize, they are going to regenerate, produce new vessels, yes or no? It will, yes. Right? Now you, you, you can make the link, right? Now, in patients with diabetes mellitus, when you are doing exercises, you what you are doing is basically in in increasing the number of new vessels, new vessels, new formation, because they are going to be formed because you increase the need when you are doing exercises. But, and what you know what? And these vessels are like a newborn vessels without problems of the glucose, without problems of atherosclerosis, without just yes, new vessels. And that is going to increase the perfusion of the blood supply to the internal organs on the eye, on the kidney, on the skin. So you delay and it's going to prevent the nephropathy, the neuropathy, and the retinopathy. Nice or no? Conclusion about this. So the 95 of 95 per, percent of the treatment is considered that is in diabetes mellitus to diet and exercises. Now you know why we are doing exercises. I don't want to give the name, but I'm going to write it down. It's called the angiogenesis. It's when you're doing exercises, you produce the angiogenesis. 
Angel means vessel. Genesis, new origin. New. Okay? And and that is not going to that is not going to just improve your your retina, your kidney, and your nerves nerves, but the the blood supply that is received the GI tract, right? So the peristalsis is going to work perfectly. Your contraction of the gallbladder is going to work perfectly. The peristalsis on the esophagus and the stomach, the release of pancreas, pancreatic use because the 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 pancreatic duct, the Wilson's duct, the wall contains smooth muscle that at the same time have uh, innervation with nerves. And all that is going to be improved just doing exercises and your diet, of course. Okay? Okay. How long has the insulin replacement therapy has been available as a treatment? Can you imagine how many diabetic patients we have? And where is coming the insulin? So you kill somebody to take the insulin to give it to somebody? No, <laughs> right? So how how we use this huge amount of insulin needed, right? The pharma pharmaceutical industry is taking place here. In the past, there was no there was no was no the technology to produce insulin in the lab. So they was doing basically taking the insulin from porks. From pigs, they was killing pigs, taking the insulin from the pancreas. That what was in the past, long time ago. A lot of impurities, a lot of chemical reactions, anaphylaxis, whatever. Right? It was a kind of no really. Nowadays they do a semi semi synthetic uh, insulin that is prepared in the laboratory test, and we have different type of insulin that is not the time for you to know. Okay, we have the. The rapid, the short, the intermediate, and we have the long acting. That is pharmacology too, by the way. Okay? A message too. So I'm not going to go on that because it's not your time. Okay, so how is hyperglycemia defined? The normal glucose level are going to be between 70 to 99 milligrams per deciliter during fasting stage. Fasting. This fasting should be no less than 12 hours. No eat anything. <clears throat> okay, no water, nothing. Fasting means NPO. You know what is NPO, right? Yes. What is NPO? What is N? What is NPO? Nothing by mouth. Yes. Nothing per or oral. Yeah. Yeah. You're, so nothing per, in Latin, that is a, a Latin abbreviation. Is O means os, that means mouth. Yeah, you can translate that oral, yeah. All right, so question for the exam, 70 to 99 milligrams per deciliter in fasting, during fasting. Okay, so up to 126, 25 is pre-diabetic, more than 126 is going to be diabetic patient. We have the GTT, that is the glucose tolerance with uh, 70 grams of sugar reading in two hours. I'm not going to go on that. Just remember this value, 70 to 99. You okay with that? Yes. So low, uh, more, than, more, more than 99 is going to be considered hyperglycemia. You can start having the signs of PPP. And the signs when it's below 70, that is hypoglycemia. Do you see somebody with hypoglycemia before? Yes or no? Can you say that again? Do you see or do you uh, saw somebody who who was having hypo hypoglycemia in the past? Yes. Yes, right? So the first example, myself or yourself, right? <laughs> Your hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia. So sometimes we get hypoglycemic, right? So what we do, eat candy or sugar to increase or to boost our energy, right? So just remember, less than 70 hypoglycemia. Uh, it's not your time. We are, we need to remember the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia, but it's not your time because it's important because you need to monitor the patient. If they take too much insulin or too much medication, 
the, the medication is supposed to lower the glucose. If you lower too much, they can go into hypoglycemia, signs and symptoms. So you as a nurse, you need to know that, but not, not now, it's not your time. All right. So now, um, the risk for infection. So I'm not going to go on that because that is um, more advanced. So, but just to let you know, Remember, I was telling you that urine has a lot of sugar? Yes. All right. Perfect. And what happened then? So, bacteria love sugar. So, it's very common to see in patients with diabetes mellitus with UTIs, urinary tract infection. See, everything has an explanation. Everything yes. has a why. Okay? Okay. What time is it? Let me see. It's 135. 135. 135. Okay, so I, there are so many things to talk about, about. About Okay, let's do this sample of menu. Your daily meal plan should take into account your size as well as your physical activity level. The following menu is tailored for someone who needs 1,200 to 1,600 calories per day. My God, I need almost 3,000, so this is half of me. Okay. Breakfast. Whole wheat. Pan, this is wheat. Whole wheat is complex carbohydrates, right? Pancakes or waffles or a piece of fruit, fruit that is giving you fiber, right? Three quarters of a cup of berries and six ounces of no-fat vanilla yogurt. So what is this? Okay, this is for diabetic patients. I can tell. So... Tell me why we give, tell me something about the whole wheat pan, pancakes or waffles. Mm, why is it? Oh? Sorry? Oh, uh, fiber. Fiber, okay. Fiber. Are you giving carbohydrates there or no? Besides yeah. the fiber. Would it be yeah. like complex carbohydrates? Exactly, complex carbohydrate. And when you said whole wheat, pan, whole wheat, what means whole wheat? It's with a with a with a cover, right? And the cover, you know, the cereals they have the cover is protein, and inside is the starch. When they say whole wheat pancakes, means that the wheat is being made, taking the the all the cover of the of the seed. So it's a good source of proteins here. One piece of fruit or one piece of fruit or three quarters of a cup of berries. What is that? What is giving you doing that? Uh, vitamins. Vitamins, mm -hmm. beautiful. Vitamins and minerals, right? Vitamins and minerals. Six ounces of non-fat vanilla yogurt. What you can tell me about that? Calcium or? Yeah, calcium, yogurt, what else? Vanilla, vanilla is just a flavor. Non-fat, why non-fat? Why we we use non-fat instead of fat? Where for diabetics, they should have less fat as, as much as possible. Yeah, and besides that, if you have diabetic patient, they do not release enough enough bile. They're not responding to the amount of fat in the, in the duodenum. So the bile is not going to be enough. So it's better to use non-fat. You okay with that? Make sense or not? Yes. Yeah. So there are many reasons we doing that. And the first one you said was very well. Okay, very good. A lunch, cheese and veggie pita. I don't know, pita, pita, you like pita? Medium apple with two tablespoons of almond butter. This lunch, I will be hungry with this lunch. I, I will not take it. I will be diabetic. I'm not taking that. What is the, where is the meat? Where is the flavor? No. Okay. Cheese and veggie pita, medium apple with two tablespoons of almond butter. So what you're giving there? It's a very low diet, by the way. Huh? I mean, it's not really... A heavy meal, not even light. It's very kind of just necessary to live, I guess. 
tell me, uh, Chris, you will like this this as a as a as a menu for one day for you. Let's see the lunch. Probably not. The lunch, no, not at all. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be hungry. Yeah. Oh, but in dinner, what do you have? The stroganoff. 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 Yeah, that is something, right? Do you know how to do stroganoff? No, I do not. Yeah, well, someday we can do. <laughs> I'm going to. The stroganoff is very nice. A uh, half a cup of carrots, side salad with half one and a half cup of spinach. Basically, minerals, vitamins. Uh, we have uh, uh, fiber, tomato, vitamins again, fiber, cup of chop, uh, chopped bell pepper, two tablespoons of olive oil, the fats, and one teaspoon of red wine vinegar. Why red red wine vinegar? Probably because of the taste, right? Because it's a salad. You cannot eat the salad just with plants. Snacks, two unsalted rice. Why unsalted? For the sodium. And why? Why do you want to decrease the sodium? High blood pressure. High blood pressure. Beautiful, Noelan. Thank you. Because the narrowing of the vessels, right? Mm -hmm. Are going to increase the peripheral resistance. It's not vasoconstriction, technically talking. It's just a narrowing of the vessel that increases the peripheral resistance, increasing the blood pressure. So you want to decrease the intake of salt. How much do you decrease the intake of salt? 50%. 50%. Okay, so for example, the blood pressure, if you are having blood pressure, if you have blood pressure, without having diabetes, to control the blood pressure should be less than 140 over 9, less than that. But in diabetic patients with hypertension, it's more, even more, more, more strict. You need to go down less than 135 and less than 85. So it's more, more strict. And you know, many people with diabetes in the long run, they're going to, what is a complication? In the extremities, I saw people amputated, both legs and both arms. What kind of life is that, right? So please, if somebody, someone say, I'm diabetic, I'm going to a party, I'm going to take my injection, and I, or I can take my tablets if I'm diabetic type two, and I'm going to eat whatever I want, then I'm going to see. No, no, no. So you are shortening your lifetime. You're shortening your lifetime. A party doesn't doesn't work. Okay. In diabetes mellitus are going to be more. This is another question, by the way. Uh, diabetes mellitus will be more highly uh, more incidence in. American, American Indian population, American Indian population, no Hispanic population, and Latin, Latin, it's Latin and na Native American population. In Alaska, Indians of Alaska, Indian, Native American of inland, I mean, here in the States, are going to have high risk for diabetes mellitus. So Latin people, do you see a lot of Latin people? Latin people have a lot of diabetes. Why? And the Indian people too, American Indian. All right, so historically, talking about that, is that uh, you need about three, four generations of continuous starvation periods. A starvation, when you starve yourself, you're not, losing, you're, not, you're not making a favor to your body. So you are increasing the risk for insulin resistance insulin resistance so the body is trying to to maximize the the poor insulin the low amount of, of glucose that you have when you're starving so the receptors are going to be decreasing number so when you suddenly want to eat normally again there is no enough receptors that is when appears the insulin resistance and historically you know the con conquest uh, conquerors and the, all the colonies 
uh, there was having so many vaccines in the past, so many vaccines. I, I don't even want to think about that. But people was dying by starvation because of the wars, because of many things, right? And uh, in South America, for example, it was very common to see people with diabetes. Why? Because, the you know, in South America, we was having, like, in Peru, my country, we was having, like, 8 million Indians at the beginning when the, when the guys came, the Spanish. And, uh, and after 300 years, only half million people survive, after half million. So it's a lot of really massacre. Anyhow, and these periods of starvation, so coming back to our, our, our nowadays, don't starve yourself. Don't starve yourself. You can actually develop insulin resistance with your time. Okay, so you just need to start eating what you're going to eat in the next few years. So don't change. Don't the diet is one, two, three days and then eat whatever you want. That is not that is not right. You're gaining weight. You're gain, you are it's a loose, loose situation. You're nobody's gaining there. Nobody's gaining. Okay. So in diabetes type 1, uh, we have what we call the acidosis, that is the diabetic ketoacidosis. If you remember, the glucose cannot be used by the, by the cells, so the cells are going to look for another source. That source will be the fat. The fat enters into beta-oxidation, going to acetyl-CoA, and produce a lot of ATPs, 180 ATPs, very good. But, but the bad thing is that when that happens, it's going to produce the ketone bodies. Ketone bodies. It's going to produce, there is no ketone bodies, ketone bodies. Ketone bodies. So at the time that the fat, the fatty acids are going to be transforming acetyl-CoA, part of that produce ketone bodies. So the acetyl-CoA go to the Krebs cycle to produce the ATP, and the other portion is what is the problem the ketone bodies. These ketone bodies are going to be very acid. There is three um, ketone bodies. I'm not going to go on that. The ketone, the whatever, the oxybutyrate, three of this. And this is going to produce acidosis in the blood, decrease the pH, producing metabolic acidosis that we learned in the ABGs once in the, in the past. Okay? The diabetes mellitus. Type 1. Type 1. The most common is uh, DKA, uh, DKA most commonly happen in diabetes type 1. And what is the major cause of, of uh, this decompensation is because the patient do not follow instructions. This is the most common. They go to the emergency room because they forgot to inject the insulin. They forgot to eat the insulin. They forgot to inject the insulin. So that's why they're coming with DKA. We call that DKA, diabetic keto acidosis. The DKA. Okay, so diabetes type one, exercises and diet is okay. Okay, but the main component of the treatment is the administration of insulin. You need to have a, a balanced diet. You need to have your 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 daily activities should be similar one day to another. So yeah, diabetes diabetic patients they need to have a very disciplined life. Otherwise, they will be decompensated all the time. In diabetes type two, uh, the ninety five percent of the treatment will be diet and exercises. Okay, so that is a uh, distressional uh, diabetes. Let's go to the distressional diabetes. This is extra reading, okay? So it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, I will say, optional. All right, so let's have here the... Let me see, it's 49, so we still have in time. Uh, there is no here... Oh, the... Uh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. So, all right. So, diabetes mellitus. I will, okay, I will tell you a few more things here. Diabetes mellitus, type 1, 
is caused by an, a, as an autoimmune disorder. Autoimmune disorder. We have an autoimmune disorder. The pancreas, as you know, they have double function. It's a mixed organ. It's a mix. Right? Yes or no? Yes. It's a mixed organ. organ. The pancreas is endocrine and exocrine. Exocrine is going to do the pancreatic use. That we produce about 700 ml to 1 liter a day of pancreatic use. It's a lot. And we have, the, that is the exocrine portion. The endocrine portion will be the islets of Langerhans, the alpha, beta, and delta cells. Are the beta cells in these islets of Langerhans who produce the insulin? How many islets of Langerhans we have in the pancreas? So basically, they are located on the tail of the pancreas, in the distal portion of the pancreas. And we have about 1 million of these islets of Langerhans. So when you destroy, when you destroy 60% of these islets of Langerhans, you can enter into the deficit of insulin. So you can get into diabetes mellitus. Okay, so uh, all right. So this diabetes this low uh, that is in case of diabetes type one, diabetes type one. So autoimmune disorder. So they are going to destroy the uh, islets on Langerhans, and that is taking a while because basically the diabetes type one is genetically. Uh, genetically uh, pre predisposed mostly genetically okay and this autoimmune dis disorder started in very young age but you're still having about a million and little by little they're going to be destroyed 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 and how fast it's been destroyed you start to develop diabetes mellitus that's mostly happening in young people up to 30 years old up to 30 years old so a 14 years old 15 years old is where most commonly start to appear diabetes type 1 because the islets of Langerhans are start to decrease and decrease year by year. So diabetes type 1. And it's called juvenile because mostly happen when you're young. Okay? And the diagnosis of diabetes is forever. Right? You cannot cure diabetes. The latest that can happen is about 30 years old. 30 years old. In diabetes mellitus type 2, you have islets of islets of Langerhans, you produce insulin. What happened? The insulin is not able to open the door for the glucose to get into the cell. Okay? In gestational the, the uh, okay, so, okay, so let's see. In We already talked about gestational diabetes, right? Yes. Okay. It's 99, it's not 100. Some people say 100, but now in NCLEX, they want to ask, it's 99. Normal blood glucose is 99, not 1700, 1799. Okay. Key concepts of management of diabetes. It consists some, uh, some diet, good diet, is the keystone of diabetes care and control. Daily safe care uh, skills enable a person with diabetes to remain healthy to reduce risk for complications. Uh, self care skills. For example, you need to prevent falls or uh, uh, use shoes all the time because the distal portions of the toes and hands, they can get burned or they can hit something and they don't feel anything. They have a big wound and they don't feel it because the, the neuropathy. Blood glucose monitoring is critical practice for blood glucose control. So the, the glucose in blood, the glucose test. Do you know how to take glucose test already? Yes. Okay, this glucose test. This glucose test should be before and after the uh, administration of the drug. Insulin or the... Because if the patient is hypoglycemia, hypoglycemic, and you give more insulin, it's going to get into hypoglycemic coma. Okay, so be careful with that. A personalized care plan depends on the situation where they live, what they are doing, etc. So there is basically you need to have uh, decrease the risk for injuries. Risk for injuries. 
if they like to bike, they like to run, or they like to to play soccer or football or whatever. I don't know. So everything, that's according to the situation, uh, need to have different different uh, patient education. But the, the common is patient safety, risk for injuries. That is number one. Okay, so I think that's all for today. I'm not going to talk about the uh, insulins because that is pharmacology too. So I put it out, yes, for somebody who wants to read it, if that is the case. But that's all what I have for you guys. <laughs>